Hi, I'm Zen, and this is a video on creating our development environment. I'll walk you through the installation process uh, all using a virtual machine, and this is done using VMware Player. Let's start it up VMware Player. Now you click on Open a Virtual Machine. Don't worry so much about where I'm going because your tutor or supervisor will go through with you where your uh, virtual machine is held at. So I'm just going to go to my D drive and it's at VMs. Here you go. Just open up the one that has a VMX extension. Don't worry so much about the file name. <coughs> okay, I'll just click that and open. Currently it's in a powered off state and we'll just play the virtual machine and it'll start running. This might take a while, so perhaps I'll skip forward. Okay, so once you have reached the login screen, you can go ahead and click on maximize at the top here. For the password, we're going to use password P A S S W O R D. Enter. Now once you're logged in, the first thing we're going to do is to enable viewing of file extensions because we're going to be changing those file extensions of different configuration files from time to time. So let's do that in folder options. We'll go over to start and click on control panels. Under the view by, make sure you have selected large icons or small icons, whichever you want it. And under folder options, click on it and in the view tab make sure you uncheck this hide extension for known file types uncheck it and click on apply ok and now the file extensions for all the files will be available for our viewing and editing now we'll go ahead and start with our installation all the installation files are located in C drive installers now the first thing we're going to install is notepad++ so that's over here, MPP. If you see it in a different version number, that doesn't matter. Just use the version that is most updated. Now all the installation files that I've placed here are just inside the VM. You can copy it out to install it into your own laptops, or you can download them from their respective websites. So let's go ahead and run the installer for Notepad++. Then we'll click on Run and we choose English OK and we click next agree to the terms and conditions and perhaps we'll change the destination folder uh, let's remove away program files and we click next just click next and install Once it's done, we'll click on finish, and there we have it. Notepad++ is up and running. Close that for now, and we'll move on to the next installation, which is our Apache HTTP server. Now, if you see multiple files, um, also, oh, sorry, multiple installation files, don't worry about it. Just choose the one that has the highest version number. In this case, we have 2.2. 1.7 and 2.2.22 so this is the one that we want to open let's run this and we click on next at the welcome screen accept the license agreement click on next again and next we'll keep everything as uh, default settings because and we click next now at this screen we will select the custom because we need to be making some changes and click next. 
the one change that we're going to make is the installation folder so let's click on this change just remove away everything from program files all the way to Apache Software Foundation remove that away and leave it as just simply C drive Apache.2.2 sorry Apache 2.2 and then we'll click OK and next and install okay the installation process may take a while so I'll probably skip forward a little okay so that's done and we'll click on finish now to test the installation or to test whether Apache server is really running we can first take a look at the icons you should see this little feather uh, icon that is running under the taskbar and it should have a play button that means it's running all the Apache service that's available at the moment in this case it's our Apache HTTP server now you can run up any kind of browser be it IE, Firefox or Chrome which are all installed in the VM I'll choose IE and at the address bar let's just type in localhost localhost now you should see this message it works that means it is successfully serving you a HTML file straight from the Apache server that you have just installed I'll go into this uh, in, in detail later on just so that it doesn't screw up my test later on I'll go ahead and clear the browser cache for now go to tools internet options under the delete button uncheck this preserve safe, uh, favorite website data and click on delete and now we we'll click on OK and let's close this browser for now alright now that we know the initial installation of Apache server is running and working we we'll go ahead and make some changes to its configurations now the configuration file for Apache server is located in the C drive Apache 2.2 which is where we install it and under the CONF which is in short for configuration alright the main configuration file for the Apache HTTP server is the httpd.com file just select that and right click and select edit with notepad plus plus and when it opens up we can go ahead and make some changes to it but right before that let's create a folder called C drive www in our Windows Explorer go to C drive and let's just create a new folder and name it www I'll explain why later on <coughs> okay running through this in your practical notes you should be seeing quite a few things that you need to change one of the things that you need to change is under the rewrite module let's just search for that now we want this with the configuration file for the HTTP server uses hash or the hex sign as it's commenting so we want to uncomment this line you just remove away the hex and you take this line as one of the settings that is to be loaded next thing we're going to change is the document root as you can see currently the document root is set to C drive Apache 2.2 HT docs I just quickly take a look at that folder Apache 2.2 HT docs inside there you should see an index.html file uh, let's take a quick look at what's inside of it and there you see it works this was the file that has been served when you key in localhost earlier in the browser so this is what's been thrown to uh, back to the browser to be shown to the user now this is where the folder was looking at so whenever you click on uh, whenever you type localhost 
or whatever is the server name that is to be used in your uh, environment, be it development or production, it looks into the document root first. And in this case, it's looking for a index.html file as its default file. So it will be loading this file by default and showing it to you in the browser. So we're going to change that. We don't want to use the HTT, uh, the HT docs folder. So we're going to change this to use our www folder as the document root. So let's just go ahead and change that. www. Save it. And so just a little bit down, you should see this portion here that has to do with the settings for the permissions of the files that you'll be hosting in your Apache server. Don't worry so much about what I'm going to be changing next. This is actually a more lenient uh, setting, which wouldn't make much sense in a production environment. But since we're doing it for our development phase, it is uh, quite all right. So let's just go ahead and change this to all. Going down a little, you will see another C drive, Apache 2.2 slash htdocs. We'll change that one to www as well. And just scroll down a little bit more. Here you see options, indexes, follow sim links. Right above it, let's just add in this line called index, ignore, star. Periodically save your file so you can keep the changes. And further down, you should see another allow override. Change that to all. Just a little bit down, we see the directory index. And in this portion, the files that comes after directory index setting will be the file that is to be loaded when you key in a folder path in, in the address bar of the browser. <coughs> So it will automatically look for a file in that folder that has the file name of index.html. That's the default. We want to change that a little. Because we'll be handling PHP uh, files, so let's put index.php in front. That will be the first file that it looks for. It will look for everything in priority in sequence. So if it can find index.php, it will load index.php. If not, it will try to look for index.html. And let's just add in one more index.htm because that's one of the default files in uh, out in the web as well. Go ahead and save this again. I've made quite a bit of change to the configuration file. So in order for any change to take effect, we have to restart the Apache server. So there's a few ways you can do that. Uh, you can either go to the services, go to services, and you should see this service called Apache 2.2. You can go ahead and stop this and start it. Or you can go ahead and click on that little feather icon and expand out the stop command, which will cause it to turn into a stop sign and select start again and it'll turn back to play once it restarted it is going to load the new configurations and you should see the changes take effect now you notice i haven't been using the restart on both sides because i prefer it's simply a matter of preference i i prefer to stop wait for a while then start it back up again uh, it's it's up to you if you if you want to use the restart go ahead and do it but sometimes if you meet a uh, issue with restarting it back up again then go ahead and try and use the stop and start okay that's it that's all for this portion we'll move on to the next part which is the actual testing so let's test our new Apache server setup go ahead and open up your browser again I hope you have cleared the cache if you haven't let me just do that again go to tools Internet options, delete, make sure preserve favorites website data has been unchecked. Take this tree and click on delete and OK. Now type in localhost in your address bar and you should see this. 
why isn't it showing the it works message? Does anyone know? Can anyone venture a little guess? Okay, for the more perceptive of you, you would have noticed that the www folder is currently empty. So, there's nothing for the Apache server to throw back at the browser. So what we can do is to shift that file from htdocs, just copy it, and bring it over to the www folder. And let's go back here and do a refresh. And there you have it. So with this, you can pretty much understand how uh, the Apache server is looking into a different folder to get the file that is needed to serve back to the browser. Next, let's do a bit of um, let's do a bit of path settings. Go ahead and click on Start. Right click on Computer. Select Properties. And click on Advanced System Settings. Under the Advanced tab, you should see this button called Environment Variables. Click on that. Now under the System Variables box, scroll down until you see the Path variable selected. Click on Edit. At the Variable value, go right to the end. And this is where we have to key in the bin folder for the Apache uh, for, uh, for the Apache HTTP server. There's a few ways you can do it. You can either type it in manually, or let's just go open up Windows Explorer again. Go to the actual folder and click on the address bar. Copy this path. Copied it, and go back to your environment settings. Before we paste the file in, be sure to put in a semicolon. That is the separator between each of the path. There's quite a number of paths around here, and each of them are separated by a semicolon. So be sure to add that in first before you do a copy. Oh, sorry, do a paste. Right at the end. And click on OK. And OK. So that's all for now with regards to the Apache server. We'll come back to it later on. Next, we'll touch on the PHP. Go back to your installers folder and open up the PHP folder. Once again, if you see different uh, different files available, just select the one that has the larger version number. And in this case, we're using PHP 5.3.5. Right click on it and select Extract All. Choose C Drive PHP and we'll do an extract. So now all the files that were in the zip file or zip, zip archive is now being thrown into the C drive PHP folder listed here. And the next thing we're going to do is to add that path into our system settings again. Go to environment variables, look for path again, and let's just this time around, let's just type it in. Remember the semicolon again, right at the front. And click on OK, OK, and OK. Now let's move back to the PHP folder. You should see quite a few PHP.ini files. One is named development, one is named production. Make a copy of the production PHP INI file. Right click copy and paste. And we'll do a rename of this file to just simply php.ini. Yes. And open it up using Notepad++ again. Sorry. 
select it, right click, edit with Notepad++. The PHP INI file is a little bit better in terms of Notepad++ because uh, it is now color coded. As opposed to the httpd.com file, which uses the hash as a, a means of commenting, the PHP INI file uses semicolon. This is very important. So anything that is in within a semicolon will not be uh, loaded or will not be will be ignored by the PHP processor. Now there's a few things we need to change. Uh, firstly, let's go ahead and look for this path called the short underscore open underscore tag. Skip this first one. Go to the next one. By default, short open tag is set to off. We will bring it to on. And let's choose or let's look for max execution time. For development, we'll do some changes to a much bigger number. 240 would be my choice. You can choose any other number you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much. Next, we'll go on and look for error log read right about line 636 you should see error log now there's two kinds you can either use the syslog or php underscore error logs uh, errors dot log I prefer this one so let's uncomment this next we'll look for this extensions underscore dir this is where you're telling PHP where the extension DLL files are located extension DLL extends the capability of PHP uh, so that it can work with things like MySQL server or even the zip or some uh, or there are many other extensions to PHP that has been available for quite some time it's just set off by default so now let's go ahead and change this extension DR to C drive PHP slash ext okay, some of you might notice I'm using the forward slash instead of the backslash and this is what some students always forget so for now on within PHP INI file or the httpd.com file we'll always be using the forward slash for the separators between folders now let's move on and look for some extensions to uh, enable. First one we are going to look for is the CURL. As you can see all the extensions has been commented away. We will start enabling one at a time. This is one this is the one that we want. Followed by GD2 and perhaps MB string. Next, maybe we'll just enable open SSL. Soap. And lastly, XML RPC. Last setting that we're gonna change is the time zone. Date dot time zone. Uncomment it first and we'll give it a variable. Oh, sorry, a value of Asia slash Singapore. That's all the changes we need to do so far. Let's save this file, save it. And we'll need to switch back to httpd.conf, which should still be open. Go over to the load module period, uh, load module segment, and scroll down right to the bottom. We're going to be typing something, some things in here. What we're going to do now is to allow the Apache server to load PHP as one of its um, additional extension module. So for that, we can key in some codes. Uh, well, we don't really have to key them all because part of it has been provided in the PHP help file. So let's op go back to your installers, PHP. There should be a chf chm file. Open that one up. 
expand the PHP manual to installation and configuration, installation on the Windows system, and Apache 2.x. So go ahead and read a bit of this. Uh, for Apache 2.2, we are using Apache 2.2. So take note of this particular line that we have to rename the DLL file to PHP 5 Apache 2 underscore 2 dot DLL. So go scroll down a little, copy this portion, copy it, right click, copy, and paste it into your httpd.conf. And remember what the document said, we need to change this to php5 apache2 underscore 2 and save it. Now that this change has been made, we will need to restart our php, oh sorry, we need to restart our web server in order for the changes to take effect. So I'm going to do a stop and then I'm going to do a start again. double check okay Apache server is running and it should be loading PHP by now so we can do a test of PHP by opening up a new file so click on the new button in notepad++ before we type anything let's just save the file within our document root folder which is under C drive www and give it a name of perhaps test PHP extension PHP so test PHP dot PHP and we'll click save by having a dot PHP extension this file will automatically be color coded by notepad++ so let's go ahead and type in this piece of code The PHP info function is provided by the PHP processor and what it will do is uh, throw out a HTML representation of all the settings that has been done to PHP. So let's save this file, file save and go back to your browser. Now instead of just localhost, we'll have to key in localhost and that file we just created test PHP dot PHP and let's click on enter if you see this screen if you see this page that means PHP is working and integrated into HTTP server just do a quick check on the version number 5.3.5 .5, and let me just take a look whether CURL has been loaded yes all the extensions that has been uh, loaded into the, uh, the, PHP, uh, the PHP processor should be listed here and just take a look at the default time zone it's set to Asia Singapore and that's about it for the integration between PHP and Apache we will now move on to the installation of MySQL server let's go back to the installers folder under MySQL there's quite a few files here we'll start off with installing the server the MySQL server which is this file mysql 5.5.28 or depending on whichever version that you have just double click on it click next accept the license agreement next and we will choose custom because again we want to change the location just remove away program files leave the rest intact remove away program files okay next and install again this might take a while so let's just skip forward okay so once the installation is done click on next next again so once you have reached this screen, make sure to launch the MySQL instance configuration wizard has been checked and click on finish. In the configuration wizard, we'll click on next and choose detail configuration next, developer machine, 
multifunctional database and make sure C drive is selected next and we're using the decision support take a note of this port number you might need it later, later on so 3306 is the default port number used by MySQL and take on add firewall exception for this port click next select best support for multilingualism next and check this include bin directory in Windows Path so we don't have to go back to the environment's variables again because this setup will automatically add this path into the path variable next now type in a password uh, for simplicity's sake, we'll just use password as the password. And click next. Now this last part is extremely important. Depending on which hand you're using to operate your mouse, use your other hand, raise it up, cross your middle finger over your index finger, clench the other two fingers and your thumb together, Hold it up while you click on the execute button. Okay, it worked. Good. Now click on finish and we'll carry on with the installation. You can let go of your cross fingers now. If before installing the MySQL Workbench, we need to install two supporting files, namely the Visual C++ 2010 redistribution package. Let's install that. All you need to do is to run the files and select accept the terms and just click install and let it do its thing. That was fast. Next we'll install the .NET 4.0 client profile. This installation is going to take slightly longer. So let's see where it goes. Come on. Okay, once again, accept the terms and conditions. Click on install and let it do its thing. This will take a while, so I'll just again I'll skip forward okay it's finally done uh, just click on finish and lastly we want to install the MySQL workbench double click on the file click on next the only change we're gonna make is to remove away program files from the installation path click OK next and we'll select the complete option and install this shouldn't take long I guess ok once it's done make sure you click on launch MySQL workbench now and click on finish and it should start up MySQL Workbench. So MySQL Workbench has been start up and it automatically creates a connection to the server that you have installed earlier. Uh, one for the administrative and one for creating of tables. We'll talk more about this in later issues, uh, in later practicals. For now just close off this and let's go back to your configuration files again. So that's Let's see, we have the Apache HTTP server, PHP, and now we need to add in the support for MySQL into the PHP. So let's look at the extensions again, php.ini file. Look for the MySQL DLL. So there's two of them. MySQL.dll is the older uh, library which we still need if we want to run some old PHP codes which is using the older library 
and there's this new one MySQL I short for MySQL I uh, the MySQL improved version so let's check this tool and save the INI file again any changes we need to make to the PHP INI file we, it will only take effect after you restart the Apache server so let's go ahead and stop then start our Apache server again okay it's running go back to your test PHP do a refresh and let's do a counter check uh, search for control F search for my SQL and you should see my SQL library has been loaded into PHP so is my SQL I alright let's conclude we have successfully installed the Apache HTTP server and we have also installed the PHP processor and integrated it to the HTTP server. Lastly, we have installed the MySQL server and integrated it to the PHP processor. Now all three items have been linked and you now have a working development environment for our future practicals. And that's about all there is to it. Uh, so have fun. I will see you when I see you.